Have you ever felt so much love from Christ to a person that you are weeping over that person? Because Jesus is crying over people's condition in this life. And when you tap into God from your heart and you live with Christ every day in this intimacy and this love, he gets more space in your heart to come through. And I remember from many years ago, I, I asked God to give me his heart, a little bit of his heart. I wanted to have more of the compassion for people. And it was like a little struggle for me to pray that prayer because I knew it was going to cost me something to carry his heart. I knew it would, would also be painful. And I was right. So God started answering my prayer. And I also been through a lot of pain myself. So it's easy to have compassion and empathy on others. But then God started pouring into my places where I used to be herded. And he poured into me. His compassion for people's wounds, sicknesses, mentally, physically, whatever. I started noticing people in the bus, on the street, on the coffee place, wherever I went, that was hurting. First I saw the physical pain. And because I'm bold and I want to build the kingdom of God on this planet as much as I can do. I, I let him use me where there is people. When I see people hurting, I can't not go over to them. I have to ask them if I can pray for them. And they always say yes. And I feel this pain when I see people hurting. Um, and also when it's a mentally illness or heartbrokenness. People that are living in depression, in a darkness, they carry sorrow and they have wounds. And when you start praying for these people, that is exactly what God wants you to do. He comes through. He comes through you and me and that's what he wants. This morning here. I started to pray for my friend, one of my friends, and I was weeping for two hours. I cried, I cried, I cried, and I cried out to God. I said, God, my only prayer in this life is to let people see a little piece of your love, that they can see that they are so precious, they have such a value. They are your jewels and they don't know it. They're living from a lower place where the enemy keeps hurting them, torturing their mind, lying to them, living down there in that basement in their, in their soul, you know, and the enemy loves it. He loves that people are down there. What he wants is for them to kill themselves, that they should just give up life, that it should be so dark that they should think that maybe I should just end it, you know? And sometimes I can feel that. Sometimes God has awakened me in the middle of the night, praying for people that I know are depressed, and I haven't spoken to them for months. And the Holy Spirit wakes me up, and I, I started praying. I'm between sleep and, and awakening, and I'm praying this warfare prayer. Sometimes I don't know what I'm doing, but it's the spirit in me that is so open to, to obey God. And it is always praying. I think when I'm asleep, I always pray. My spirit is praying kind of because sometimes when I wake up, 
I find myself praying. So I think I have like a spiritual engine that keeps going 24 seven because I prayed so much in my life. And sometimes God puts his compassion and his prayer for people that are really in crisis over me. Um, I am an intercessor. Uh, I know that I, I have done it for years in churches, praying for people. I love it. And, and it goes so deep in me that I could see the cause to their pain. It's a prophetic gift on me together with a strong prayer that God started showing me the root system to their problem. Why they are in that condition. Because I'm very focused on solutions, just like God. So two, three times God has awakened me to pray for people that wanted to kill themselves. And I just, I didn't know what happened that night to that person. I just know that I was praying strong against the spirit of death. Breaking it over people. Breaking it over certain people that I knew. I felt it. How it was coming against them. And I didn't know what happened that night. But I knew what I did. And the next day. I, I managed to get hold of that person. And that person had tried to commit suicide. Exact that night where I was awake and prayed. And all of a sudden when that person had taken like. 30 pills or something with vodka. She was sitting in the kitchen all of a sudden regretting what she was doing, trying to throw it up, calling the ambulance or something. And it happened three times. And every time God called me to prayer and wake me up. So I believe in these kind of prayers. I believe they are important. We can save lives. We can heal people through our prayers. We're standing in the gap for their wounded soul, right? God gives you people in this life. God has given me some people that I'm faithful to. I take it seriously when he gives me people. I know it's from heaven and it's a task. It's like a, a, a mission where I, I pray I intercede, I fast, I do everything God tells me to do because it's important. I'm his servant. And, and when I said to God, I'm going to give you my life and I want you to be Lord and I want you to use me, he took me seriously. So he put that compassion on me for people and I love people so much. I love them. I pour everything that I have to them every day. I try to give love, inspiration, hope, faith, a smile, something from heaven. Because my only cry today, people, is that people on this planet where I walk should see a glimpse of Christ through my life. Something from heaven. A smile, a light, a word, comfort, a presence of him. That's my only prayer. That they will see something they haven't seen before. Because Jesus loves everybody so much. And he wants people to know that. He wants people to know and understand that they are so loved. Even when they're out there sinning. And not doing everything right. He loved them deeply. He loved you deeply. And he wants to tell you. There is no condemnation. Because he took that condemnation for you. There is no guilt. Even if you did a lot of bad stuff. And you know it was wrong. You feel shame. You feel guilt. I'm going to release you from that guilt today. Because God has taken the guilt through Jesus Christ. He carry what you should have carried for your sins. You don't have to carry it. 
you can come boldly boldly in front of the throne and receive mercy the bible says to everything you need and mercy gives us a sort of humbleness because we all know we don't deserve it we all know that but you can't earn mercy either that will be religious you try to earn it try to do good deeds first then you can receive it it doesn't work like that god knows about your past your present and your future and your future he was there when all that bad stuff happened to you stuff happened to you he's here right now in your crisis and he's also preparing your future which is going to be bright where you're going to be healed you're going to live you're going to come out of your cave your depression you're going to be healed completely and restored and god is going to use you in a mighty way because that's what he do he doesn't leave anything back to the enemy even if the enemy has torturing our lives for years he doesn't let anything back for him when he restore our lives because he uses everything that the enemy has done in our life when he has restored us he used it for his glory because he used those references those experiences you have with pain you know pain you've been there in that darkness you almost took your own life you know depression you know rejection wounds you know all kinds of pain and when you allow god to pour his oil into those wounds and you come to the father today because he loves you so much is the father heart that will heal us all it's the heart that brings healing to our emotional hurt and our hearts it's only the father heart to understand that we are sons and daughters of the most high god we are first of all his sons and daughters not servants we want to be that yes we are but we are first of all in god's eyes his precious son and precious daughter and he just want to love on us he just want to tell us that we are his jewels he wants you to come home my precious friend who are suffering today because he's standing in the gate waiting for you there's no condemnation there's no guilt there's no shame doesn't matter what you done is all covered by the blood of Jesus Christ he knew it before it happened you know he knows what we are thinking before we think in it what we are saying before we say it he knows everything and he provided so much grace and forgiveness to all of us which is the key in salvation so we should all receive this mercy and not torture our life with guilt and shame and your father is standing in the gate today to welcome you home he's standing there with a robe he's going to take off your filthy clothes he's going to wash you clean up clean you up he's going to pour oil and wine into your wounds anoint you because you're his son and his daughter and the only thing the father thinks about is that you are coming home finally he came home she came home to the father's house waiting for you standing there with a crown in his hand he puts it on your head because you royalty he's royalty he's our king and you are son and daughter of the king the most high king right so he has a ring for you a ring and he has a crown and he has jewelry for you he has a mantle for you and he also have a table before you with the best dishes the best wine and he throw you a feast because he wants to celebrate what was lost has been found the only thing the father thinks about 
is that you are turning your face towards him. Even if you're broken today, you're crying, you heard, heard it from many things, and you try to fix yourself. You need a savior, you know, and his name is Jesus Christ. We can't fix ourselves. We can try, but we need a savior. The savior, Jesus Christ. He will save you from this misery that you are in. He will take care of you. He will clean you up real good, you know. And he will raise you up and give you a standard. The enemy pushes us down. He imprisons us. He makes us believe that we are in a tight place when we can actually open the door and go out. So we are blinded by the enemy when we are on the wrong track. We, doesn't, we don't see straight. We believe the lies and we don't, don't even know that we are believing the lies. We think it is our own thoughts. Until we get a revelation about the situation. So that's why it's important to pray for people. Because prayers does wonders in people's lives. These people who are bound that I'm talking about now, maybe you are one of them. They all need intercessors. They need people out there on the, in the world that are so open to the Holy Spirit that they catch that the Holy Spirit can tell them, pray for that person right now. Go on your knees, fast one week for this person. Do it quickly. Be obedient because it can be a matter of life and death. You don't know. You're standing in the gap. And when we pray like that, when we tap into God as intercessors and pray from our spirit and listen in every particular situation, because every person is different. You can't pray like an automatic prayer. You have to ask God how you should pray for this particular situation and this particular person. And God will show you how to pray. Prophetic prayers. And when you pray like that, you pray straight from God's heart. The prayer request that's on God's heart, you catch it. And you're praying that out over that person. And that's when the wonders and miracles start to take place. Because it happens immediately when you pray like that. It's a creative prayer. It's a prophetic prayer. Like I told you, when I prayed for that woman who wanted to kill herself, it turned the same moment, I, I believe so, that it was my prayer. The same moment I start praying, something happened in that house. She lives far away from here. But something happened in the atmosphere when she was sitting in the kitchen. God came into that situation because I was here praying, interceding, standing in the gap, coming against that spirit of death. Prayer is so powerful. And the Bible also says that we should cry with the, with the people who are hurting. We laugh with them. We cry with them. We sympathize with them. So they feel empathy from us. They feel that we really care. That we really see their situation. Because that's what God does. God knows exactly what you feel today. And it's so good when I felt that in my own personal life. I felt it many times that Jesus was so filled with compassion and love for me that he cried out, you know, many times through other people back in the days. He cried out for me because he loved me so much and he wanted his daughter to come home and he wanted to heal me and deliver me from all this entanglement that I had in my life and it happened so quickly so we need to listen to the Holy Spirit listen when you pray for people listen deep ask God how should I pray for this particular situation show me God so this morning I was praying and weeping 
I had to do my makeup twice <laughs> because it, everybody, everything just fell off me here. I was weeping and crying and weeping and crying and I knew it was God's cry for that person. And that love was so great for that person. And it touched me deep. That Jesus loves this, this person so enormously that he put this cry through my heart. That I managed to cry out. I felt it. And I believe stuff are breaking off that person today. So prayer is so important. And be obedient and be faithful to those people God has given you in this life. To pray for, to stand in the gap for, and, and, and pray that prayer that Jesus will be seen through your life. That's my biggest prayer, at least. That I want, to, want them to see the light, the beauty, the hope, the, the happiness, the, the, the comfort, the compassion. Everything that Jesus is, I want it to come out of me into this world. That's my only prayer. God bless you people. I just want to come in and share this. I thought I would sit there and cry actually because I had to just get myself together and speak to myself and say that Elena, you're going to have a video now. Stop crying. That's how much I cried. But it was a good cry. You know, it was a cry from the spirit. It, it's a prayer. I used to work in a um, rehab place for uh, drug addicts. And they have been through hell their whole life. And they've been so hardened and destroyed in their hearts of all the hell that, you know, they're survivors. They live on this survivor personality where you get really tough, you know, and maybe a little blocked in your emotions too. And some of those girls, when they came into this rehab, I was so broken for them that I didn't have words. I sat there on their bed just weeping. I wept. And it was Jesus who was weeping for them. And in that weeping, they started to weep too. And we didn't say anything. We just sat there and wept. Because they understood that cry was real. It was compassion and love. Jesus was moved by compassion. He was crying for the people who was hurting, the Bible says. He went up to the mountain by himself and cried when he saw the crowds coming to him. Have all these needs, desperate for miracles in their lives. And when we catch his heart, we also start crying for people. Is his heart... It's not only smile and, you know, talk about him. It's also crying for people and show that compassion. No one has greater love than the one that gives his life for his friends. Give your life for your friends. Jesus gave his life for you. Now you pour what he poured into you. You pour into other people and you be obedient and sensitive in the spirit and your prayer matters don't think that oh maybe the pastor need to pray or some famous preacher no 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 it's not like that when god puts on your heart to stand in the gap to pray for somebody you are the chosen one to do it you have the anointing for it and don't look at yourself minor don't look down on yourself and thinking how could i pray for that for that city, for that nation, or for that person. Yes, you can. If God calls you to do it, you are called to stand in that gap. He knows what he put inside of you. He knows the potential that you have, you know. And he wants to release that potential in you, out of you, I mean, through your prayers. That will change people's lives. They may be thought of taking their lives, 
making other destructive choices. But because you were obedient and start praying, they did a U-turn in their life. And they came right. They came back to the Father's house. So take your prayer prayers seriously and pray and do everything the Father tells you to do, okay? God bless you, my precious friends. And you are broken in here. God will never give up on you. He will never give up on you. He's haunting you. He's haunting you. He's bleeding for you. He's crying for you. He will never give up on you. He doesn't care if you feel shame or guilt. He only wants you to feel loved. He only wants you to come home. He wants to kiss you and hug you and hold you and heal you and carry you on his shoulders, you know, because he is your true father. And one day you're going to understand this father's love and he's going to heal you completely from your past. And you're going to be totally restored. That's what's going to happen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. I come back soon. Goodbye. It's not working today.